Well, so good to see so many of you. Um, I hope that everybody has had a safe and happy holiday season so far. Um, today's write-in, if this is your first time joining us, um, is going to be a series of short little lessons, and then we'll go into prompts. Um, so the write-ins are a little bit different from our typical web, uh, webinars. We do just a little bit of kind of teaching content at the beginning, and then what we really do is focus on just writing together and having some space and time to write with each other. So we will go ahead and just dive in. So today's write-in is all about short stories, which is a fun topic for me because I think a lot of us often think in novel form and sometimes it's fun to go into short story form and think about something that could be finished a lot more quickly uh, than a novel could be. So we'll start off today by looking through a few uh, a few just tips for writing short stories if you haven't done that before. And then we're going to do two short writing sprints. Um, and for these sprints, since short stories are a little bit different, I have done this a little bit differently this time. There's going to be a few different prompts that you can choose from for those writing sprints. Or you can write a short story that you're working on, you know, separately or something else that has inspired you, or you can just work on writing something else too. There is no real pressure here to work on anything specifically, even though we're talking about short stories today. Um, okay, so before we dive into our prompts, let's cover just a couple tips for writing short stories. So one of the biggest tips when you are writing short stories is to start near the end. Um, and that's because a short story is not a novel. You don't have hundreds of pages to develop your plot and character, so you don't have to explain everything. You don't have to set up a bunch of backstory. You don't have to, um, you don't have to, you know, create all of that space. You can kind of zoom in right near the end, so to speak, of the story, right? So you can zoom in to the um, to the point where you're as close to kind of the climax as possible. Now, obviously, short stories can can vary in range from a few pages to, you know, dozens of pages or so. But that being said, um, as opposed to a novel where you are plotting out multiple events that are happening, a short story is going to be a much more specific look at a specific place in time. Um, so it's important to start as close to the end as possible so you're not wasting time giving um, unneeded backstory when you don't really have it. Um, another thing is to make sure that you are making your opening lines and paragraphs as engaging as possible. You're starting near the end, so you're dropping folks right into the action. So it's important to make yourself, uh, to make sure that your readers are finding themselves in the story without any delay. Uh, another thing to think about when writing a short story is to limit your scope. Um, so this is a place where it's really great to explore kind of a narrow set of characters or even singular character settings and or ideas. So rather than a novel where you'll likely have multiple characters potentially balancing multiple plot lines, the characters are often going from setting to setting. In a short story, you're going to really zoom into one specific part of that. Um, this is a really great opportunity to test constraints. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love writing short stories, because it's a great opportunity for us to, um, to put some shackles on <laughs> in a way that kind of makes our writing, um, you know, really focus on one, one area, right? Rather than novels where we're thinking about um, a lot larger uh, of, a, of a picture of characters, setting time, etc. So short stories can do everything from centering on just one specific character or one specific moment in time or space. The more you limit this in the focus of a short story, the more you'll make sure that your story does not get unwieldy, right? So we're trying to keep it limited in scope um, in order to prevent it from being too unwieldy. Um, now, another thing to think about when you are writing a short story is to make sure that it's following a specific structure. This is really helpful, particularly if you are new to writing short stories or just new to writing in general. Following a structure can help you plot if you are coming up with your idea or if you're somebody who likes to write as kind of like a pantser, more by the seat of your pants. Um, going back and looking at your written work and deciding how uh, how it's come together can help you in the editing process, right? So you can think about structure in the edit if you are more of a person who likes to kind of write by the seat of their pants when you're first drafting. Um, so even though short stories are uh, much shorter and more condensed than a novel is, they're also going to have key elements like an inciting incident and the climax, right? So they'll typically follow that same structure. It's just obviously going to be more condensed and happening within a, um, a smaller amount of time than it would be with a novel, right? So it's important to think about following a structure. This doesn't necessarily all go out the window just because the formatting is a little bit different. 
Um, and then another thing to think about when writing short stories is not to stress about backstory. So a lot of times short stories are not going to need backstory. You can give your readers key information through sentences and phrases. So for instance, if you are focusing on two characters who have a history with each other and they're arguing, you can convey information about their relationship through glances that they're, you know, giving to each other or through objects that are placed in the room that they're in or something like that. You don't need to spend pages developing that background information. Short stories are really all about containing as much information as possible in as few words words as possible, right? So how can you be layering in um, information about the characters alluding to their past together without actually having to spend those pages developing and exploring that past, right? Remember, our scope is limited, but that doesn't mean we need to eliminate um, the, the idea that our characters have existed before, uh, before the, the confines of our story, right? They've clearly existed before the confines of our story. It's just important to think through what actually needs to be in that content, right? And so when you're thinking about what actually needs to be in that content, um, you can limit what you're talking about about to, um, to the events of, of the story itself, and then add in needed backstory, uh, needed context, et cetera, through key sentences and phrases. Okay, so keeping that in mind, we're just going to dive right into some sprints. So like I said, today's going to be a little bit different. We're just going to have two writing sprints where we get to work on short stories. So I've pulled together a couple of different prompts. Here's three different ones for three different genres. Um, so one sample prompt could be that uh, Amazon has invented time travel and introduced preemptive shipping. You receive something completely unexpected from your future self. Um, another prompt, if you're more into the romance, could be that you are sitting at your desk eating candy hearts and you start to realize the notes on the hearts are trying to give you a message. And another kind of more fantasy or potentially science fiction or maybe even horror story would be you're focusing on a writer who becomes trapped inside their own book. So if you have no ideas for a short story, these are three prompts. Um, you can pick one of them or you could maybe try to combine all of those, but that would probably get us out of the limited scope. Uh, but you can pick one of these prompts um, and we're going to work on this in two 20 minute sprints. So thinking through, keeping in mind what we just talked about, about how short stories should be limited in scope, should start near the end, should eliminate uh, backstory in favor of kind of uh, uh, implementing that information in the narrative itself. Um, and then trying to get as much of these stories as we can, possibly can in the next 20 minutes. This will be a fun writing exercise. So we will do 20 minutes, then we'll take a break and kind of come back and discuss how it's working for you. Um, and then we'll do another 20 minutes to either finish out the story um, or, you, you know, if you really want to, you can try to create, write one of these in the first 20 minutes and another in the next 20 minutes if you're super, super fast, uh, though that would be a lot of words to type really quickly. Um, okay, so again, you can pick one of these prompts or if you have another short story idea that you're working on or a different story altogether that you want to work on, you can do that too. Uh, but I will go ahead and start this 20 minute timer and we will come back together in about 20 minutes to discuss the progress that you've made. Good luck, everybody.
Okay. So that is our first sprint. It looks like a bunch of people are already starting to drop their, um, their stories in the chat, which is totally great. You can feel free to do that, but I do want to go through some of the questions we have. Um, so Trisha asked, do you have any suggestions for thinking of endings? I usually get a scene idea, but it always seems to be at the beginning or end or beginning or the middle. So Trisha, for me, I like to think about where the character is going, right? So if we're in the beginning of a scene or something like that, kind of what is, what would be, I think like an, an easy or not an easy way, but a, um, an almost, uh, uh, like kind of black and white ways would be to think what is the opposite, right? So if the character is at this place at the beginning, what would the most opposite of that be, right? And that could be a way to think of the ending because that is at its core, a lot of stories are about transformations of characters from one place to another, right? So if you're thinking about, um, if you're thinking about that at the beginning, right, the next thing to think about is kind of like, well, what would what would the polar opposite of that be? And what would the journey be to get them there, right? That could be a good way of thinking about the end. Now, obviously, that's like a very, again, kind of black and white way of looking at it. It's just polar opposites. And a lot of stories have a lot more nuance. Um, but that helps me think about where it's going, right? Like if somebody is, um, if somebody is at the beginning, you know, where are they? And then where, where would they be going, right? Like if, if this is who they are in this moment, what journey do they need to undertake? What do they need to learn? What transformations do they uh, need to undergo to kind of be at the end? And that can kind of help you fill in the dots a little bit. So that's what I like to think about with characters, kind of like what is the transformation that they're going to take? And if I have a snapshot of them at the beginning, how will that change at the end? Um, and then uh, someone else asked, uh, I find that my story is more of a plan or a report from the future than an actual story. So I think maybe you're working on the first sample prompt that we have. So I just want to say, first of all, that that is totally fine. Um, it is okay to, especially in short stories, it can be a really fun time to um, to report or to like experiment with uh, different style and different structure and different um, different ways of, of of writing. So it could totally be like a plan or report from the future. What I would say though is if you're if you're coming up with it as a plan or a report from the future, I think you should think about um what, you know, why what's the report? What's the purpose of the report, right? What is the goal of sending that report? If the character is sending their past self a report or a plan or something like that, what's the purpose of that? What are they hoping to prevent? What are they hoping to change? What are they hoping to prepare? And that type of thing. And that can kind of, that can inform how you're going to structure that report um, and help with that. But yeah, report format can be really, really fun. Uh, okay, so it looks like some folks have gotten about 200 words, which is great. Jack's got a lot here too. I'm curious to hear how, for everyone, how did working on this go? Yeah, you can totally post your story. If it's too long, you might um, you might have to uh, post in um, post in pieces because there's a little bit of a word count limit. Three seventy-seven words, awesome. Five forty-nine, amazing. Three hundred, four forty-five, great. Two forty-eight, three fifty-three, two ninety-one. Yeah, somebody's saying I need to outline intensely. I totally think. Yeah, I get it too. Yeah, quick reading is not the thing. It's a good opportunity to try to. Um, just test that out with these types of prompts. Yeah, if you're not able to paste, um, it might be because you have too many words in there. You might have to cut down some few. 3.30, awesome. Okay, guys, let's take a quick little two-minute stretch break, and then we'll come back and we'll do our second 20-minute sprint. We can either work on the same prompt or a different one, but we'll take two minutes and come back at 2.37.
Okay, it is 2.37, so stretch breaks are over. Let's check on our second 20 minutes. Again, this can be um, either the same prompt if you want to keep working on it, or it can be a different one or a different story altogether. But we'll do 20 more minutes. So good luck, everybody.
Okay, that is it for our second prompt. Um, thank you all so much for joining today. It looks like there are some really great things happening in the chat and I'm glad to hear that so many of you found these prompts interesting. I think it's always a great way to like shake yourself out <laughs> and try something new. I know Jack was saying in the chat that sometimes like a random word generator or something like that can be a really great way to, um, yeah, just shake things up creatively. Um, and I think, you know, if you are feeling intimidated about writing a longer story or something like that, you can always try something shorter, you know, and you can always try something, um, you can always try something different. Um, so great work, everyone today. We will catch you next month at our next write-in. And I hope you all have a great rest of your break and have a very safe new year. And I'll see you all in 2022. Bye everyone.